So we're going to talk about, we're going to do speed taking. You guys know how speed taking works, taking it from the shift cord, which the link actually works now in our YouTube channel. Please go down below and join the shift cord. You can post takes and we will maybe talk about you and call you stupid or correct. Um, we're going to, uh, we'll go back and forth, you and me. Uh, Belair, I'm going to start off by giving you one. Atomic is the third best player in the open era behind Monkey Moon and Seiko. This one's from Trucus and Fruit. Uh, they kind of like went back and forth and kind of responded to each other about this, but their take together combined to this. I like it. Um, I think he's kind of, it's, it's so funny how it feels like Seiko and Atomic are both very understated while also mm-hmm. just winning throughout. Like neither of them not have anime like gifts. That's what it anime is. Gifts on Twitter. Yeah. That's what it is. But um, I you know the results speak for themselves. They've both been mm-hmm. incredible. Both have showed the ability to be a first banana. Both can be a second banana. Uh, kind of what the team needs. But at the end of the day, they just find a way to win. And uh, I think uh, I think Atomic has had the good fortune of having four incredible teammates. Wait, five incredible teammates. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like I'd agree. Because you can have good teammates, but you have to still win. You do. And he's, you know, throughout Envy to Heat to G2. Yep. He's been, every time you give him a roster good enough to win, he's winning. And there's a lot of players that great get great rosters and they make finals or they, they win regionals, but they don't win the big one. And he's proven more than anyone else in North America. If you give him the team, he'll get you a ring. And that's yep. all you can ask for from a player. Mm-hmm. Am I giving you one? Yeah, fire me. We'll just go back and forth. Okay. This is from Reese. SSG have a better chance at making top four at the world championship than Gen G. This is such a Reddit take. It's insane. (laughs) This is people do this every year with teams where they're like, here's this team with like inferior results. But like, like if I think about it hard enough, maybe I can see a world where it happens. Mm -hmm. And I feel really smart saying it. No. Gen G has been better than Space Station all year. Space Station has outplaced Gen G once all season. And Gen G looked pretty good and lost to the Falcons, who looked better than everybody. I love SSG. I love LJ. I love Hawk. I love Chicago. I love, I love Sad Jr. Sad Jr. is my dog. He's Canadian and he's amazing. He's two things I love. They're not better than Gen G. They're, they're one dimensional in a way that Gen G are not. They're not going to be better. I'm sorry. Who who was uh, SSG didn't make the first major, and a big reason for that was they kept running into, into some team. G- that's right. That's who it was. I, I didn't know. It, the it's only so advantage ago. that SSG have are a coach, and that's not disrespect to Chrome. I just believe in Sad Junior a lot, and we literally saw Sad Junior go into Chrome's job. Whatever. Um, I will. Here's mine for you. This one is from Mop World's Grand Finals should be a best of three of best of fives. I immediate take, love it. If I thought right. it through, maybe I'd feel different about it. But like as like a, a Rocket League purist, like mm-hmm. let's really see the results. More mm-hmm. games, best of sets, that's very exciting to me. I know mm-hmm. that it's an impossible sell because you're trying to capture the casual fans and you can't really take up that much time. And there's a bunch of logistical reasons as to why extending in this way is not very possible, but I would love a best of set to be like, all right, Mm. you kind of get a couple bites at the apple. You can take an extended time out to try and settle things in. It feels Mm -hmm. like you're kind of getting more accurate results um, in in this fashion. I would love that. And it makes the finals feel more important. I'd be happy for the entire for like championship sun there to be like a, a semifinals day of best of three best of fives and then mm-hmm. a final of best of three i think best of three best of sevens is too much i don't think you should have to win eight games yeah to to win a, a thing but six feels nice six is much more than four mm-hmm. and you still and then you break it up so you can like you know you can win seven games you win seven games and lose like you really have to um you really have to to to, to like it's just a perfect balance. I'm a big fan. I actually hint. I talked. We talked about that when we interviewed Cloudfield. I said I thought that would be the best way to like make matches feel more important. It's just that the BS, the best of sevens were too long to do a best of set. I agree. I think so. It's good that we're both. We we both think that that is a mm-hmm. good take. Um. Okay. Is it? 
Cliss, I've seen, is it Cleese? I've Let's seen, just say Cliss. We'll say Cliss, but I, I think I've seen this individual in, in Hootie's Twitch Twitch streams. But probably if G2 Hootie's had run, famous. he is, man. That's the only reason I was kind of bummed out. The only reason I decided yeah. to come on the pod was I, I thought pump faked. He's, he was never I'd be able to talk to Hootie, but you know, yeah. I take what I can get. Um, <laughs> if G2 had run into Gentlemates in bracket, they would have lost. Um, maybe. Like I said, I think their Gentlemates matchup is better than the Falcons one, but the Falcons also spanked G2. Yep. Like, I think G2 was on a mission that day. I think Beast Mode was on a mission that day, but... I really do think that the the gentleman style is is an issue for G two, mm-hmm. and the way G two want to play because they're cool to just sit there in the midfield and just like pressure you kind of half in half out, not overcommit too much until uh, you run out of boost and then they'll just punish. So maybe like I don't want to fence it, but I think they had a better chance in Falcons for sure. I don't know if they would have lost because like I don't know if you saw Beast Mode in that semifinal, but he was playing out of his mind. Daniel was a freak in the final, so. Yeah. Um, I think they would have had a better shot for sure. All right. All right. For you, this take is, I mean, we, we talked about this earlier, but I guess more in a defining. Uh, this current G2 roster, this is from Vern, by the way. This current G2 roster will be considered a top three roster of all time by the time they're finally over and done with. This isn't just NA. This is all time across the whole world, every region, Europe, MENA, all those places. I'm not mad at it. I mean, if they continue at this kind of clip, like if this isn't like if this isn't the top of the mountain and we're actually kind mm-hmm. of seeing a couple rivets here, um, it's kind of hard to argue against it. I mean, I kind of blew some of my stats here at the beginning and trying to prepare for this, but I think with them winning 71% of their games, 45 and 8 on the season, even if you compare them to some of the great teams that we've seen before, they already have a better record. The fact that they've been able to win a major, that they've made every single grand finals in North America, who is kind of depleted since this team stole all of the best players. But the fact that they've been able to dominate a top region that they have been to been able to overcome, um, you know, making it to both grand finals and are now, the favorites heading into the world championship. If they win the world Mm -hmm. championship, I mean, you know, you, you have already done what vitality did last season, plus being dominant over the totality of a season. Um, Yeah. I think you look at dig like the OG dig team, Mm -hmm. Panda turbo K dot. You look at RLCS X to like, like world championship BDS. BDS, Yep. That whole era. I think that's number one because it was two years, only one roster change. I feel like that is like the defining best team. And then you got Dig second. I'd probably put last year's Vitality third because they we never seen like an extended period of dominance at a level like that. Just killing everybody. Um, like because as good as Dig were, they didn't have to play the teams that Vital- Vitality had to play incredible teams and just made them look silly. Mm-hmm. Um, Way smaller sample size on those yeah, old teams. But too. I, yeah. So I think. G2, to, they got to win the world championship to get up there. But once they're up there, I think that another season of greatness can actually put them, can put them like number one. Maybe. Yeah, but my, my, my all, yes, yeah. excuse me, my yes was through the understanding of them winning yeah. the world championship. Yeah. If they don't win the world okay. championship, still a great team. But if they can yeah. do that, then we're really talking. Totally. All right. Put, me, is, put, put the last one on me. Is this me for you? All right. Uh, this yeah. is from Vesper. The FIFA E, I love FIFA E. FIFA. FIFA Rocket FIFA. League World Cup will not feature super teams, but primarily the best teams of each existing nationality. Um, I mean, we just talked about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think if we look at the teams we made after doing that exercise, I think Vitality probably loses, maybe. Like, I think Vitality has the best chance of losing. The other three team, well, I think also England is the one team where I think the existing great team could most likely break up if, if Rise and Joyo want to just like run it back one more time and grab Oski or grab Nolly or Jack or any of those other four players. Yeah. Um, but if all, let's say all five stick together, I think France and England have the best chance. I think there's almost zero chance that the USA, Saudi, and Brazil 
even though the USA and the Brazilian teams will be good, I don't think that they're going to be better with all the continuity that Furia and G2 have. Obviously, I don't think Falcons have comp. They haven't been shown to have comp. And then, I, so I think outside of Vitality, if all five of those teams play as the national, their national kind of entrance in the qualifiers, um, I think will major at least see sixty percent of them. May, most likely, I'd say eighty, and then maybe a hundred percent. So yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. Where, um, so is it those five? Where, where does uh, Morocco go for you? Atachi, uh, they're just like Nass. the team that everyone's everyone's gonna be like, man, you gotta watch out for Morocco. You know, everyone's going to be like, I'm very smart. I think Morocco is going to go top two. Uh, and they could. But um, I think you look at, I mean, Spain is cursed. There's cursed. We were talking about the other day. Uh, Spain players play. There are four regions. Mm -hmm. Spain had players in four regions this year. NA, SAM, uh, SSA, and EU. Zero players are going to the world championship that are from Spain. Like they just are. That's a cursed region. They just find, they, they, I don't know what happened there. But they do them and success in Rocket League just does not seem to get along. Um, so I don't believe in them. Australia should be fun. I always want to watch Power. I love my OCE after dark. Mm. Um, so I'll be happy to see them there, uh, assuming that they're the ones. Um, yeah, so I, I think Morocco's definitely, I think I would put Morocco like right on par with like England, Brazil. I think the USA, France, and Saudi are, are a tier above, but I think they're right there with them. Morocco, on Nats, really. Morocco or the Knicks of the RLCS. Yeah. It's like, hey. Well, it's it's up to Nass, right? Yeah. Like, it, if he goes out top eight again, you know, which is really, 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 really possible if this is like a Swiss. I don't know, man. He's got to figure something out, but he's going to have better teammates than he did on M80, so who knows? It's cool that we got some. When is this happening? I missed the date. Uh, dates is... haven't been announced yet. Okay, so I'm yeah, assuming just... post-Worlds. Yeah, yeah, it'll probably be the big event of the off season, I would assume. Yeah, if there's not any other kind of third party lands, um, this will be the big one, which will be yeah. fun. It'll be a fun like little post thing tournament. A lot of players will be free agents, so their orgs might not hold them back. It'll be used for tryouts, which would be cool to see a tryout team go and make some noise there, and then maybe they actually get signed by an org mm -hmm. um, as a team. It'll be cool. It'll be really fun. I'm looking forward to it as well. Yeah. All right, we'll wrap up here, uh, Bel Air. Thank you so much. For ha for coming on, filling in for the cowards who didn't want us to face the boogeyman, um, I'm gonna give you this time to, to to plug yourself. I know you already did earlier, but plug yourself. Anything you want to say, anything you want to plug, go ahead. It's all you. Thank you so much for giving me the mic. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. It's great to talk to you. You know, we are the we are the fury of vitality matchup. You and I. We've we've combined on podcasts just yeah you dude, know we're just, we're just time talking. and time we're just, again just um, talking whatever glad that uh, Yens is getting to uh, enjoy a little vacation mm -hmm. and uh, excited to uh, have come back on the pod and I guess I'll wrap it just by saying guys check out uh, check out the YouTube channel yep. been Beller putting Baller. out yeah Beller Baller been putting out stuff pretty consistently trying to you know we've got wrapped up in the major. Um, but what I'm really excited to get back to is kind of digging into and spotlighting some of these players that you might have never actually seen play before from like a, you know, player point of view. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the players who are kind of, you know, making main events, but could be taking that next step in the future. So check out the YouTube. I'm on Twitter sometimes, but I'll stop the plug there. Yeah, um, we'll link your YouTube and your Twitter in Belair's YouTube and Belair's Twitter in the description, along with lift the shift cord, a, a link to the shift cord, which you can join. Uh, once again, always make sure to follow us on socials as well. Um, and we will hopefully be back in full capacity this week. Hopefully, I say hopefully, really, I just want to run it back because I want to make more basketball references. But we will talk soon. Uh, road to shift summer league, road to world, road to everything is coming. So we'll talk soon. And uh, yeah. That's about it for us. Have a good one and enjoy your day.